Following on from our lesson on quadratic functions, having a look at how we might apply these quadratic functions to real life situations. And the real flavor here of this, the mathematics standard course, right? Not just do um, the, the bog basic maths of it, but actually take it, take something and apply it to a real life situation. So we've got a golf ball, it's hit, it's hit into the air and its height is given by minus five T squared plus 24 T. Uh, where t is in seconds. We've got a quadratic here because we've got a highest power of 2 um, and we've got a, a quadratic that's going to be concave down because we've got a negative coefficient of t squared. That makes sense, um, or at least it makes sense to me, that um, we should be, if I'm hitting a golf ball starting at the ground, it's going to do something like that, okay? It's going to go up, it's going to reach a maximum height somewhere up here, and then it's going to come back down, it's going to hit the ground. We don't need to include these bits of our graph, okay, nor do we have arrows on the end, because those arrows uh, signify that our graph continues, our, our curve continues on forever, which this one does not, okay. So that's something of what our graph is going to look like here. So let's have a look and see what, what our curve is going to look like. Uh, find the height of the ball after two seconds. Well, for our first part there, I just substitute in t equals 2. Now I've got a negative involved here where t is concerned, uh, sorry, where um, uh, where the coefficient of t squared is concerned, so I need to be really careful. So I'm going to have h equals minus 5 times 2 squared. I'm not actually squaring my negative, so it's not as important as if I had, if I was substituting negative 2, which I actually couldn't do here because um, time is always a positive thing. And if I go and substitute that in, I'm going to end up with h equals 28 metres after two seconds. Show that the height of the ball of after 1.8 and 3 seconds is the same. Why is this so? Well, let's do the substitution first. So if I've got t equals 1.8, I can go and substitute that in and end up with h equals 27 meters. If I go and substitute in t equals 3, I end up with h equals 27 meters as well. Now, we've just shown that they're the same, okay? But why are they the same? Does this make sense that we've got two different times where we're at the same height? Yes, it actually does. Because again, if we go back to that really basic version of our parabola here, start at the ground, we end up back at the ground. We go up to some maximum height. And at one, at, at, we know that at two seconds, we're at 28 metres. So we've got one second, two seconds. Over here, we've got three seconds. Um, and at three seconds, uh, sorry, at three seconds here, and 1.8 seconds, a little bit less than two about there, in those two spots, we're at the same height here. This is, this is our time. Okay. So that's why we're at the same place, because the ball has passed 27 metres still going up and then is coming back down when it again reaches 27 metres. So in the first in instance here, going up, whereas in the second instance here, the ball's going down, okay, because gravity is constantly pulling the ball back down to earth. So your answer for that second part should reflect that in some way. In the first time the ball is going up, the second time the ball is coming down. Um, for part C, we want to find the time um, or how after how many seconds the ball reaches maximum height and how we're going to find this value. So I've written here these two values from part B. Okay, and it's no coincidence that you told those two values that produce the same height. Because what we can do with a quadratic is we take any two values, any two x values, and these are x values. Remember, that this is what our curve looks like. And these two values are here and here, approximately. Okay, they produce that height of 27 metres. Okay, now if we take any two values for x, or here t, that produce the same y value or the same height in our case, that means they're the same distance from this line of symmetry here. And that line of symmetry is our time when our max occurs, our t max. Okay, so to find that we need to find our average, okay, our average of 1.8 and 3, which is 4.8 over 2, add those two numbers together and halve them, 
which is 2.4 seconds, which is halfway between the first time it reaches 27 meters and the second time it reaches 27 meters. That's how we find that maximum height. So we, our answer there is we, for part C is we're taking the average. Okay, the average of uh, 1.8 seconds and three seconds because those two values produce the same height. It wouldn't matter what those heights were, okay? If we said, let's find the two times when the ball's at 10 meters, we could take the average of those as well. Those ones would be down here, okay? And they would produce the exact same uh, thing when we took the average of them. They did hit this midline in the middle, which is our maximum time, okay? So part D, uh, find the maximum height. Well, we just need to substitute in T equals 2.4. T equals 2.4 seconds. We'll write in our substitution here. H equals minus 5 times 2.4 squared plus 24 times 2.4. We're expecting a number bigger than 27 because we know if we think about it, our ball gets to 27 metres and it's still going up and then it comes back down and it gets back to 27 metres, we're expecting something a little bit bigger than 27 metres. And we end up with H equals 28.8 metres. Always some logic to these type of answers. If your answer end up being um, 300 metres here, well, you might be a very incredible golfer, but I don't think you're hitting the ball 300 metres in the air um, without a very special golf club. Um, so and we're expecting our answer, as I said, to be a little bit more than 27, which is what we get here. I'm just going to describe the answer for part E. Um, why is this quadratic model not useful for values of t greater than 5? Well, if you actually go substitute in t equals 5 seconds into our model here, you'll get a height of negative 5 which means that this golf ball has now gone five meters underground, which does not make any sense, okay? For, for, our, um, for our model here, the, the time must always be positive and the height must always be positive. But at the same time, um, we're going to reach a time where the ball would start to go negative, okay? Or if you think about it, this ball flies for a certain amount of time, it gets up to 28.8 meters as a maximum height, and then it comes back down to the ground and that's when we stop measuring, okay? We, we're not measuring the bounces here. We're not measuring that it continues on and it bores its way into the ground. Um, the, the height here must be positive, which is why uh, a, a value of five or larger is not going to work. I hope this has been helpful.